satellite to talk more about the fiscal cliff. Congressman Tim Griffin, appreciate you joining us from Washington, D.C. this evening. Thank you for having me. Hey, both you and Representative Rick Crawford were the only members of the Arkansas delegation to vote against the American Taxpayer Relief Act. I mean, how should Arkansans back here at home interpret your vote? Well, uh, there were a lot of bad things in the bill, uh, and uh, there were some good things, just like all legislation. There's good and bad. But I'll tell you, uh, it was unacceptable to me that the Senate would raise taxes, raise uh, hundreds of billions more in tax revenue, which I understand, but then increase spending that adds to the deficit. I mean, here we are, this whole debate is about living within our means, and they send us a bill that adds billions and billions of dollars to the deficit and to, the, and to our debt. But let me ask you this, and, Congressman. Uh, let, me you ask know, you, let me ask you, I mean, critics back sure. here are arguing that your no vote implies that you would rather see taxes go up on middle class families by roughly $2,200 before seeing a millionaire pay even a dime in taxes. They're also saying it was reckless and irresponsible. What's your response? Well, look, a lot of people say a lot of things. That's nonsense. I have voted uh, to extend tax rates. i be honest with you, I didn't have the a problem with the, with the tax component of the bill. But uh, to, to tie all of that spending on there and say we dare you not to vote for this is, is the way Washington works. And unfortunately, in Washington, tax increases are effective immediately and spending cuts are postponed indefinitely. Let me it's, just, it's just not the way to do business. Yeah, let me follow up on that. You've said before, but, that, you've said yeah, before that you support tax reform, but spending cuts don't go far enough. So how far do you want to see these spending cuts go? Well, no, I, it's not that they didn't go far enough. They didn't cut spending at all. I mean, this bill, this bill was packed with pork. It was packed with new spending. I mean, it would have been a pretty good bill if they would have taken all that additional spending out uh, or at least found a way to cut other spending to pay for it. Uh, you know, the, the idea that they can put anything on it and, and basically force you to vote for it uh, because there's a few good things in it, it's just, it's just ridiculous. We've all got to be fiscally responsible. You said it's, and, you uh, said it's at packed. the end of the day, well, you said it's packed with spending. Yeah, well, let, I well, mean, let me just are, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what, and, and I understand a, a lot of the spending, but they they should have found other places to cut. But let me let me just say this: the idea that we're not going to pay for this is ridiculous. We are going to pay for it, and after I'm dead and gone, my now two and five year old. They're going to be paying for it. Trust me. There's no free lunch here. We pay for every bit of this. You may not be paying for it this week or next week, but you're going to pay for it. And everybody in America is going to pay for it. And if we keep kicking this can down the road, we're going to wake up and the can's going to be sitting in grease and we're going to have a grease-like situation on our hands. So I, I understand that there's some positive stuff in this bill, and I have voted to extend rates. Uh, and, and in fact, we sent this bill, just to be clear on the timing, we sent this bill to the Senate August the 2nd. Yeah, five months ago. August so why the do you think, Why do you think five it took so long? Ago. Why do you think it took so long, and why? I mean, people back here are frustrated that... Uh, you know, the representatives and the Senate and, and, and the House just can't find an easy solution to, to this big problem. And we're the ones back here suffering. Well, let, let me tell you, uh, uh, why did it take so long? Well, I can tell you, we passed it in August and it sat over there for five months. So you'll have to ask the Senate uh, and the president why it took so long for them to send that back. Uh, I would say, secondly, that I'm frustrated as well. And I would say, thirdly, uh, Arkansas, it, it, in my view, is, is conservative and is not part of the problem. But there are a lot of pe parts of the United States where people say they want a balanced budget, 
but they don't want any cuts. It's always cut everything but mine. Make everybody else do this, but not me. But here's, here's the interesting thing. The president just got the tax increases he wants. We're running a trillion dollar deficit a year before the tax increases. Now that we've had the tax increases, we're still running a trillion a year. These tax increases are just barely moving the needle. So the bottom line is the tax increases may make some people feel good, but they're not actually dealing with the deficit. Trillion dollar deficit a year before the tax increases, trillion dollar deficit a year after the tax increases. And, uh, you know, and I don't know who these folks are that you're talking about, the critics, but I would love to sit down with them and uh, at my office, just give me a call. We'll sit down, and I'll walk you through exactly. It sounds why like a, it I sounds voted, like a good uh, idea. The way I voted. It sounds like a good idea. Maybe we can make that happen when you return to Arkansas. Congressman Tim Griffin, always appreciate your time, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.